Welcome to another edition of Cool Cars. Interesting people today. It's the lovely couple, Julie and Lowell Taylor. They were on the Amazing Race Canada there from Lethbridge. They did Lethbridge Proud. Probably one of the most popular couples to ever be on the Amazing Race, in my humble opinion. So we're going to have a chat with them, talk about that amazing experience that they just had. And in the meantime, we have a 2001 GT Mustang convertible. Gary Clausen owns this vehicle. Gary, thank you so much for allowing us to, to meet up with uh, Julie and uh, Lowell on this one. Tell us about the, the car. Well, this is an 01 Mustang GT convertible. I bought it for my wife for a wedding present in 06. Yeah. And uh, she actually blew the motor up on it <laughs> last year. And the dealership wanted 9350 to put a motor in, but I bought an interceptor cop car motor and put it in there oh, nice. this spring. Very nice. Yeah. Now, the color yellow, your wife loves that? That's why we have a yellow car, because <laughs> she loves yellow. You know, and there's something about driving a convertible. It just, you, you have a little more attitude, don't you? You do. I feel like I got it now. This is actually a good car. We've raced it a few times have with a 100-footer. Yeah. Uh, when Sylvia and I raced it the one year, we both raced the same car. I was lucky I beat her, because <laughs> I'd never hear the end of it if <laughs> yeah. I didn't beat her, so yeah. I beat her. Uh, and then this year, she raced her Beetle, and I raced the Mustang. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. And how did you do? I did good. I beat her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for the car. You're we're welcome. gonna go, We're going to get the amazing race couple on uh, cool cars. Interesting people. Hello. <laughs> Julie, hello. Hello. Which one's which? I'm Julie. Julie, can I hug you? Oh, oh, yeah. Can I hug you? Oh, yeah. Hey, sorry that you're here because that means you lost the amazing race. But you know, anyway, here's what we got to do. We're gonna, I got I got a clue for you. Let's the get started. The amazing race continues. All right. Okay. Open it up. Oh boy. Oh boy. All the anxiety returns. Okay. This is exciting. I know. Okay. Here we go. Make your way to the Mustang that is parked outside of your house to get your next clue. I think ah, I see it. I see it. This way. Come this way. Okay. okay, I don't know. Who wants to? Who's got the shorter legs? Me. Oh, definitely. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, Lola. You're like shorter than mine, you think? There you go. Okay. Yeah, Thank there's you. not a lot of room in Mustangs. Okay. There we go. Now wait before, and then I got to get you your clue. I'll buckle in like a good girl. Wait. Oh. Oh. <laughs> They're going to say, don't buckle up. Just wait. Okay. Okay. Enough. <laughs> hey, congratulations. Here's your second clue. Oh, thank you. We are so brilliant, aren't we, Lowell? <laughs> okay. Oh, put on your seatbelt because safety is sexy. Yeah. And yes. tell your driver to make your way to Hudson's where you'll get your next clue. Yay. Driver. Yes. Can we go to Hudson's, please? Hudson's. That's it. Let's go. <laughs> we Here we go. Whee. To Hudson's. To Hudson's. To Hudson's. Okay. Are you so drinking? I'm doing you... my hair. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I actually showered today, you know. Did you? I've been up here, actually. <laughs> I could have dealt. That's okay. No, I deal. I deal. My hair looks way better flowing in this wind than yours. Well, I thought it would be cool to, to be uh, to be in, a, in, a, in an open thing like this, don't you think? Oh, yeah. So, always. Lowell, when did you... when? Were you ever able to drive, or did your uh, vision go before you were able to get uh, get a driver's license? Yeah, I drove until about 2004, and I gave up my license. So, yeah. So what was your first vehicle? My first vehicle was a Pontiac Grand Prix. Ah. Named Delilah? Named Delilah. Nicely. Why, why, why Delilah? Uh, why not Delilah? <laughs> <laughs> was it a good, good was, little car? It was a good little car. Yeah? Yeah. Kind of more of a boat. <laughs> no, well, that was my first car. My parents had a car that was the boat. Uh -oh. <laughs> An old Ford, but I can't remember the the ones that were the police cars. The oh, big long ones. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember what they were called. Julie, what was your first car? A uh, Volvo. Really? 1980. And? Tell I, me about it. <laughs> it was amazing. It was yeah? standard. We learned on a standard. You know, and that's the thing about. Uh, I find if you're going to be on the amazing race, for the love of God, learn to drive a standard. I was, we were hoping that there would be standard vehicles because the <laughs> self drives were definitely our downfall because <laughs> I was navigating and driving. Yes. But yes. we thought we'd have a bit of an edge if it was a standard because we thought probably other teams, some at least, might struggle with standards, and yep. and I got that down. So. And we were <laughs> hoping a standard in a different 
country in New Zealand, there's in New Zealand where they're oh, on yeah. a different side because well, we own like a, a Mitsubishi in New Zealand. Oh, did you live in New Zealand? We lived there for a new, yeah, we lived in New Zealand for a year. Oh, wait, where, whereabouts in New Zealand? We lived in just north of Auckland. Which was uh, in Whakawerawera? <laughs> close, close, yeah. <laughs> Called Kumu. Okay. That's what our dog's name is now. <laughs> nice. I spent uh, I spent uh, a few months in New Zealand myself, just Ooh. doing the traveling thing. And I always remember loving the W H A K yeah. sound. Oh yes. <laughs> in New Zealand. It's classy. Yeah. It is. It's very classy. It's the way I roll. <laughs> Did you enjoy New Zealand? Oh yeah. We love New Zealand. If we didn't yeah. like our family, we'd still be there. And is that right? We, and if yeah. we liked, or if we didn't like money, <laughs> not that we love money, but make a lot less of it there. <laughs> Did you go because you wanted to? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Just a working holiday. Nice. I'm trying to remember where I'm going. Hudson's, oh yeah, down here. It's the old cheesecake. Right here, here we go. Radio. I've never been here. Oh, are you ready for something? I guess so. <laughs> yeah. Yeehaw. I want to go here. Oh, was, now I'm starting to talk, trying to talk I was like say, a... Are we still are we speaking in accents now? Trying to speak like a Kiwi. <laughs> we can't they, speak like Kiwis. Good they were, as, mate. <laughs> yeah. Sweet as. All right. Hang on. Oh, that's clue. We're here. Okay. Clue. Better remember. Come up. Clue. This will be your last one. Are you clueless now? <laughs> Make your way inside Hudson's for your Cool Cars Interesting People interview. While entering, make up a hilarious pun. Hey, there you go, Lowell. Puns on the spot. Okay, here we go. That's your forte, right, Lowell? <laughs> I'm leaving that job to you, Lowell, just Oops. so you know. Oh, we're, in, we're in Hudson's. We're in Hudson's, ready to table the discussion. Woohoo! Bada boom! There's the pun. I was born and raised in a punitentiary. The puns will well, just keep rolling. Yes. Yeah. It's okay. punishing. Okay, go on. Go on. And, I, and I do prefer my puns intended. Yeah. All right, thanks very much. Are we going to. Yeah, that's right. You win. All right. Okay. Hey, guys, thank you for my, very much for doing this. Uh, I, as a big fan of uh, Amazing Race Canada and, and the U.S., it was so neat to see guys from Lethbridge, like you. And, I've, and I've, I, as I tweeted to you guys, if you weren't from Lethbridge, I'd have been hoping for you at the same time anyway, because you're, you're that fun. So oh, good you. for you. So in a nutshell, when you're thinking about it, now that you're back, and I know you can't talk about everything, but um, Julie, what's, what was it like? There. It was... That's a loaded question it, for it, you. It was amazing, you yeah. know, as per the title, in the most kind of exhausting, stressful way possible. Right but still amazing and an incredible opportunity. And we knew that while we were there, this is very unique. It right. is a very hurry up and wait experience. Sure. While we were doing the rushing, we weren't, we weren't dwelling on our kids at home or what we were missing, but during, during the down times, that's when we started second guessing our sanity a little bit. <laughs> I mean, why, what are we doing yeah. here? We're crazy, but we had a lot of fun during the challenges. Well, and you came across that way. And as, uh, I mean, I know they edit things, but legitimately you did have fun, right? We had a blast. Yeah. We went into it knowing we probably wouldn't win. Yeah. And we wanted to enjoy every bit along the way. And we wanted to see things and do things that we'd never see and do any, yeah. any other time. So that's what we got to do. We got to rappel off the Calgary Tower and bungee jump off the Sky Tram and do little tugboats in Haida Gwaii. So yeah. these, these things are things you can't even pay to do. Exactly. And it was epic. It just, yeah. we had a blast along the way. Okay, well, let's, let's go back. Uh, when you guys met, where did you meet? <laughs> Originally, go back. We're going way back. Way back. Yeah, when did you first yeah. meet? How do you guys, you're married, you've got kids. Yeah. So what's the, what the I want the whole, I want the story. Yeah, you want the dirt. Yeah. We met 13 years ago, so in 2003 at University of Lethbridge. Okay. It all that began was, here. Yeah. What, what was the story? What happened? I mean, you said, can I borrow your textbook? Uh, I need, uh, <laughs> what, what? He what? was, he was president of the club we were both involved in. What was the club? So, uh, InterVarsity Christian Fellowship. What is it? InterVarsity Christian okay, Fellowship, right. IBCF. Okay. And we were friends first, just hung out. Yeah. One thing and then led to another. started dating. Yeah. Good. yeah. And so 13 years later, you're still here. Yeah, married with two kids Very now. Nice. Yeah. Okay. okay. So then, to get to the uh, to the point where you said we want to do the amazing race, what's the process? I know I know a lot of people can go online and load up a video. Take us through that side of it. Well, my first degree was new media that I got oh. at University of Lethbridge. So I did videography and oh. design and websites and animation. So. We knew what we wanted to look for, and Julie and I have done photography along the way too. So we, we have our look, a black and white look. We created this nice 
uh, nice image on the screen and we wrote up a script. We knew they wanted to know who we were. They wanted to know that we could speak well on camera and make some jokes and interact. So we did that video and then we've made a lot of different videos and things along the way that we put along on the bottom corner of our video, like highlighting who we were. Right. And obviously it worked. It worked, yeah. yeah. Within a couple days, we had got an email. It was right near closing. We got an email that we we're on to the next stage yeah. of the interview process. Now, of course, it is well known, of course, that you were losing your vision. Um, I mean, take us through that, you know, the fact that you wanted to do that um, and how they responded to that side of it and, you know, ultimately saying, we're going we're gonna to accept someone who is legally blind because it is a you know, it's not been done before. It's a big risk, yeah, yeah. No Amazing Race franchise has ever taken a visually impaired person yeah. before. And oddly, there were, I think, a dozen applications from oh, visually really? impaired people this so, year. So yeah. I'm not sure what exactly set us apart this year, but we're glad whatever it was did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so were they, was there trepidation on their part and on and your part? I mean, because, I mean, this is a big risk. I think they had to pass it through to the very highest level and yeah. figure out how it would work with the race and, and what level. And I'm not fully blind, so I see right. the world through a small, Hole, and that's enough that we can get around. I don't think we could have done it if he was fully blind. Like yeah, that, that yeah. wouldn't have. Because again, what, what's the, what's the, your condition? I have retinitis pigmentosa, and it's a degenerative eye condition. And I slowly lose my vision ever since I was a child. And right now, I have no night vision and limited daytime vision. And just again, seeing that tiny hole yeah. that I look through the world in. So what's the, what's the emotion like for you to know that you are going to be fully blind at some point? We try not to say those words yeah. that fully blind. Or, or just, well, it may, but I live in I live in a, in a healthy amount of denial. I, yeah. Think. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I just try not to think about we it. We hold on to hope that it won't go fully blind. But my father, I mean, my grandfather went fully blind, but he was able to still farm and yeah. lived a full life. And we're hoping for the strength that, that happens. But we're holding on to hope that medical advancements right. will help. But it may happen, and yeah. we try to look at the positives and what will happen. And there's some great things like going into Amazing Race Canada yeah. and being able to do para-athletics and do yeah. the Paralympics one day. Yes. So there are some benefits and there's some things, but knowing that I made it, everything changes. Yeah. Parenting changes, work changes, um, living life is a bit, bit different. And right. I think that one, one question that people ask us a lot is, what made us different from others on the race? How come we never fought and, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and got like snapped at each other? And I think a large part of that is we were there for maybe different reasons. We, we never thought that we would win. We yeah. never expected to win. And we, we wanted to just experience as much as we could and yeah. embrace all of the challenges that we got to do. Cause Thank God you weren't the first ones out, right? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, that that's was, the worst. That so much anxiety. Our, that was our biggest fear. I, you know what, going into it, I couldn't even think about any of the attention afterwards, any anything, because I, he would bring something up. I'm like, nope, can't talk about it because I, I already yeah. felt enough pressure. I'm like, and if we're the first out, we we won't be telling people that we did this. Like, we won't be advertising this. Could you imagine if you the first challenge was in Calgary and you got eliminated oh, right there? That, How annoying is that? The first two challenges yeah, are in know, Alberta, yeah, yeah. or the first two legs, and we're like, come on, you guys, give yeah, us give us a chance Calgary. to get out of our home province. Yeah, I know. We love okay. Calgary and we love Jasper, but we did not come on the Amazing Race. Yeah. <laughs> To, to, be, to be two hours from our house. Yeah. But you met Marin right? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. And yeah, we met Stephen Harper, too. Woohoo! Who's he? Stephen Harper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Harper? Yeah, yeah. 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 Harper, yeah. Oh, that old guy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so then, so you get the, you get accepted. This is all, and, and, and I know, I don't know what you can tell me, but uh, so you have to decide you're going to take this amount of time to do the race. And you can't tell anybody, right? Is that how it works? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you just go and do it. Pretty top to, secret. Yeah. Put our lives on hold and yeah. not tell anybody. Have no contact while we're away. So we yeah. had to make up a story about leaving to South America to go backpacking for South America. Yeah. Oh, you're drug dealers. You know, we, we, we chose South America because we thought we were hoping because uh, it was the Olympic year in oh. in Brazil that. Yeah. The Amazing Race would go there, so we were hoping it wouldn't be a total lie. Yeah. And then when we came back, we could actually tell a story yeah. about being in, in South America, but yeah. we weren't. And so when we came back and we still couldn't share what we had done and people were asking oh, us gosh. how South America was, I'd um, never been there and I don't know anything about it. And <laughs> that's awkward. <laughs> <laughs> so take it, I mean, talk about that, you know, not being able to tell people. I mean, because you're, you're a good Christian, right? And you can't lie. <laughs> <laughs> Or I guess you, we, you can we, tell white lies. Yeah. As, we just kind of became hermits. And when, when, when people asked us how the trip was or something, we just divert. We, yeah. we talk about the kids and, yeah. and the great time they had with Nana and Papa. And, 
And uh, yeah, just we just kind of avoid it, and then. And people actually aren't that interested in other people's vacations. So <laughs> once you, know, you once you turn up, it on them, yeah. You pull yeah. out that big photo album and take it through the five weeks. Nobody actually wants to yeah. see that. So we just said, yeah, great trip, and then we turned it back on them. And, yeah. and how were you? And people Either just kind of went with it. Yeah. Except my family. My family thought. You can't something... even tell your family? No, I didn't tell our family. So my family thought there's something up here. My brother actually thought we were having marriage problems. <laughs> They're not talking about their yeah. trip and what's going on. My siblings were pretty concerned, um, but they ended up figuring it out yeah. because they just thought it was so odd of us to leave for five weeks. Yeah. Like, I'm a twin as well, oh, and I didn't, I didn't even email her, which she thought was so... Because we had wow. no contact with, you know, wow. and she was, she was quite hurt by that, actually. But then when, when they kind of pieced it together... But they're pretty, they're pretty adamant about you not revealing that stuff, right? Yeah, and okay. I mean, other people, I think, told more people, but they'd have to sign the same agreement. And we just didn't want to go there because, you know, we tell one person, the one person tells one person. We well, because what happens when you're, you're taping the show, like if you're up in Jasper and people, you know, maybe if someone's from Lethbridge, hey, you're supposed to be in South America. Yeah. Does that, <laughs> I guess, you know, nothing happens. That would, then we'd probably get them sign something then. Oh, right. Yeah. You, that you can't say. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, let's go. Let's go through the legs. First thing, the first thing you do. What happens? You get you're in the uh, yellow, yellow knife. knife on the ice. Yeah, Great Slave Lake. Yeah, and never it's been frozen. Never, never been, been up there I've never before. Been to the North I've been to White well. Horse before, so it's neat to be up yeah. there. Okay. Smaller city than I thought it was. Yeah. And helicopter over top and drones and, and <laughs> cameras. It was amazing. Yeah. Uh, we still couldn't talk to anybody at that stage. So we couldn't. We couldn't talk to anyone until John said go. Oh. So oh. actually, the first time we met anyone, the first time the other teams even knew that Lola was visually impaired, was at the Yellowknife Airport. Really? And they actually, I think, every single other team <clears throat> assumed that we were newlyweds <laughs> because we we like touch all the time, and because I'm guiding him around all the time, oh, right. his hands on my shoulder, I'm holding his hand, especially in unfamiliar environments. So in the hotel where we were. Um, during training week before we started racing, we didn't, he didn't want to be, you know, walking into chairs and tables before right. anyone yeah. knew him. So, so he's pretty close to me, and we were yeah. walking around pretty close. So they assumed that we were in love. Well, which we are. <laughs> <laughs> that hasn't stopped. But we're just, yeah. And then so you, look, so Yellow Knife, you did okay with there. And then you went to Jasper, right? Was that the next thing? Yeah. Yeah. Jasper. And what was Jasper? Jasper was the Sky Tram, right. and then we. Oh, did... that's where you it couldn't you couldn't finish the. Uh, challenge, right? Yeah, but we still had to wait out the time. Yeah. yeah, and then we went. Then it was uh, rafting, rafting, and then yeah. canyoning, and then to the pit yeah. stop. Right, and then you had to go to Calgary. <laughs> Calgary, a beautiful bus ride to Calgary. A beautiful bus ride. It was sunrise yeah. through that one of the most beautiful roads in right. the world. They rate, so we got to go on that road and see the what are those called? Columbian the Columbian ice, ice fields. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. And then all the way through to Calgary and meet Mayor Nancy. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Give yeah. him a hug. Yeah. Yeah. And then rappel down the Calgary Tower. Yeah, which I cool. grew up near the Calgary Tower, so yeah. to be able to, to go down do it. it and then later go there with our boys. Which we already did get to do. We got to, I mean, I haven't even ever been to the Calgary Tower myself other than that. And then just a couple weeks after the race, we ended up right outside the Calgary Tower. So we <laughs> took a picture where I was standing with the kids. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, was it uh, 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 Vietnam after that? Yeah. After yeah. Cal so that's that's a bit of a culture shock, I would imagine. Yeah, the Going language barrier is just, something else. After having no sleep and the jet lag and the heat, it was just a really insane leg. And so everybody, you see Jillian a little bit upset with, with Emmett, but everybody was a bit off. It was yeah. just so long, so hot, and physically challenging yeah. day, no shade. Yeah. It was, it was a hard day. I mean, and we always see it. From, uh, oh, well, they're getting on the plane, and then the next thing, oh, there, there they are yeah, looking for... No. I mean, that's a long day, isn't it? From Calgary, where was the, what was the lake? From Calgary to where to... Like, we went Calgary, Vancouver, Vancouver, Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Ho Chi Minh City. And then we had to take cabs to Mekong Delta, which was a... I think it was a two-and-a-half-hour cab ride or wow. so. And then once we were at the water taxis, we had to wait another two hours before the water taxis <laughs> came. Yeah. So I don't even know how many hours that was. Yeah. Just Lost track forever yeah. but yeah. our bodies didn't for the entire race our bodies didn't know what time zone we were supposed to be on yeah. we could yeah. the sleep was so hard to get you're always nervous about what's coming and then and worrying about all the what-if moments of what just happened if yeah. I had only got across the sky tram what would have happened and yeah so all those little moments yeah um, they haunt you and, yeah. Then, yeah. and then I when I'm really nervous I can't stomach food very well so oh. I could only really eat during the pit stop so oh, I was gosh. really 
yeah, I, I didn't have as much strength physically or mentally. Lots anyway. of anxiety. You don't get that at home watching yeah, it on TV. Oh, yeah, it just it's... it seems, oh yeah, I could do that. We thought that ahead of time, but every single team would say, this is way harder than they thought, I would, thought yeah. it would be. Because any of those challenges, if you came off a full night's rest, had a nice, decent meal, kissed your kids goodbye, and then went and did it, no problem. And had GPS to get there. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, yeah, what can you use to figure stuff Nothing. out? Nothing. Ask other people. You ask can ask them, people. You could ask them to borrow their phone. For, yeah, yeah. The, but they have, you, be with, like, they have to be close right. to you. You can't, okay. you can't like, use their phone for the rest of the race or anything. And so we try to find maps when we go. And we, as soon as we know, know where we're going in the Calgary airport, we got a Vietnam travel book oh, yeah. that we got yeah. and we try to get maps wherever we went as soon as we knew where we were going log on to the computers and airports and find maps to get around and des destination information so you never know where you're going and they keep that very secret yeah and you're you're always on edge but and you can use cell phones but no GPS unless it's a taxi driver who's driving right and then when you're done the day you go go to a hotel is that it are yeah, well, they put you up in, they, uh, they have, like, yeah, the pit stop hotels. They put you, so then you go there, you're not allowed to talk to anybody after yeah, that? Yeah, that's when you kind of, yeah, you're on you your own again. And then back again. Then do, they, do you get a wake-up call from someone? Do they say, no, you got to be there at a certain time? If you miss it, you miss it. That's oh your, own, your own problem. Now, i got to ask you about the production values of, like, you, you have camera guys that are with you all the time, and sound guys? Yeah. So every team has every one team. camera guy and one sound see, guy. And you never see them. You know, they're no. they're I mean, invisible. They, they, they they're absolutely, it's amazing how they shoot that. So that's, so if you're in a small little vehicle, <laughs> excuse me, I just sneezed, pardon me. <laughs> Edit that out, please. No, if, <laughs> if you're in a small little vehicle, you got a sound guy and the camera guy right beside you. Wow. We're always in an order, so Julie would always drive, and then the camera person would be up front with her. Yeah. I'd be in the back behind her, and the sound person would be beside us. Wow. And then in a taxi, it would always be... I'd be actually opposite order of us, but I'd always be on the, the left, and Julie would always be on the right, and then the sound person, so in the taxi, there'd be three people in the back seat, wow. and then this camera person in the front, and they, they travel with us all the time. We're being recorded 24 hours a day. So it's a different crew. The crews rotate every leg, yeah. so you don't have you the do? same okay. crew every leg but you do have a crew i have leg. to say I, I would be so impressed with those guys that they they've got to be in top physical shape too because they're doing all the oh, stupid yeah. things that you guys are doing along with <laughs> they're running they're running in the heat yeah. holding a big camera and keeping it in focus and getting the shot and not getting the other camera people in the background and then the yeah. sound people are getting it all in perfect audio right. and then getting consent signed for people along the way it's it's quite epic they're and amazing so if you're in a place do you do like if you're in a restaurant or whatever do you have to get consent forms from everybody that's in there? That no, just there? when you talk to them. Anybody oh, okay. who will be on television has to sign a TV release. Even if so you're car if drivers, in the taxi drivers. Oh, really? Um, people you you talk to along the way. Ask oh my gosh. Ask directions from. Wow, that that is a lot of work. It's a lot of work. The other yeah. amazing part of the whole production side is um, the post production. We're realizing now, like they had, there's so much footage. Yeah. Like we had. Yeah our camera guy, plus their zone cameras, plus GoPros everywhere, always recording our audio. <laughs> the amount of footage from all the teams they have to go through and put into 43 minutes per episode. Oh my gosh, unreal. That's a lot of work. <laughs> ever, was there ever a time you said, oh, I, maybe I shouldn't have said that? <laughs> Not too much, we don't say a lot that we don't, yeah. we would regret being on television. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But always kind of conscious. People have asked us too, are you aware that there's a camera in your face and are you aware that people are gonna be watching it? I was quite aware that there'd be, I'd have patients and bosses and, and yeah. friends and family that are watching. I, I knew that we wouldn't be saying anything really off wall or inappropriate, yeah. but I was conscious that we were being filmed. This was a TV show, though it's hard to act because you're, you're living real life. It's reality yeah. TV and yeah. you can't really, we're you not can't acting. Because you really do get pissed off at certain points, right? Well, we, we you, well, you guys never did, no. did you? No, you we can get frustrated, frustrated. At, the, at the race or the race of makers, <laughs> um, kind, yeah. of, kind of Hunger Games like, <laughs> and that they're putting us through these challenges, but we are never frustrated at each other, right. that and we, we another, work really well together. And another reason for that too is we're used to things taking us longer. Right. You know, things simple has a visual impairment, so we just course, tackle tackle things up there. Which leads us to how you guys got eliminated was the, the kind of the visual challenge that you had in the soccer ball thing, right? Yeah. As, well as, as well as, yeah, well, it was a mix a of... A mix between luck and vision that day. Yeah. So yeah. Two, yeah. Luck, bad luck. two bad luck challenges and then two highly cited activities. And so any one of those was in the case we probably would have been okay but it just four of them toppled on top of each other yeah. and plus we were it was just a, minutes behind plus it was a self-drive and um we saw a lot more of kingston than we should have we got a little, <laughs> we got a little bit lost in kingston beautiful yeah. city but we have poor memories yeah. and by the time we got to the penitentiary there were only two clues left in the whole place yeah. and 
it was dark and so Lowell couldn't see in the cells. So, and I wasn't sure what the clue would look like and I didn't want to miss it. Right. So I had a flashlight and I walked into, I think 250 cells and did a full 360 with a flashlight just looking for anything. Had I known it was just going to be a big yellow clue on the floor, I would have just sprinted to the end and back. You should could have <laughs> used a cell phone for that. Hey, yeah. Ah! Ah! <laughs> okay. So, anyway, back to uh, the pit stop. John Montgomery. What kind of a guy is John Montgomery? Oh, he's a gem. He's he? a gem of a man. Yeah. He seems like it. Seems like a decent man. Oh, he's, he's a wonderful yeah. ginger. <laughs> what can you tell us about him? I mean, what well, is he? Well, a lot of people know him from the Olympics, yeah. of course. So he's famous for that. But he's very kind. He's got a wonderful sense of humor, and he's very fast. So he'll he'll catch on, and then he asks wonderful questions at the pit stop. He kind of runs those interviews, and he just right. kind of follows them along. He's a great interviewer. Mm. He's very funny. He's witty. Um, and he's deep, so yeah. Oh, yeah. we we really had a great time with him, and he's great. made deep connections with I think, all the teams. That's and great. he just he just had a baby, so now we connect <laughs> on the parenthood level too. How much do you uh, think about the fact that you are an inspiration to, to people with vision impairment, and that anything is possible? Yeah, we we hope we hoped going into this that we'd be more than just a fun couple, and we hope that it'd be more than just a travel show, yeah. that we could spread some inspiration. And coming up to this, I've done some races for international triathlon and for national cycling. And I've done some speaking at Healthy Active School Symposium here at Lethbridge, and then I'm gonna do it again in this fall. And to be able to say, this is a story, everyone has challenges, everybody has something they'll overcome, and there'll be hard days, but you can get through this. Get the right supports, have the right attitude and that was one of the things we talked about is having a bad not the bad but having a negative attitude can be more debilitating than having a disability yeah. and we wanted to share that message that you can do way more than you think you can so I'm somebody with not a lot of sight but I have a lot of vision yeah. and I want to spread that vision and that inspiration to everybody and, and again you guys were just got along so well and I just hate watching couples that bicker all the time about stupid stuff and just uh, it just gets so annoying so uh, I'm sure most of Canada loved you more than anybody <laughs> oh and we love Canada well, yeah. too. <laughs> what about some of the other people that you like what are you uh, who were some of the people that you got along with uh, oh we got along with pretty, pretty much, much everybody, everybody. but yeah. I mean the anybody. people that we spend more time with like Rita and Yvette we were kind of together with them Remind a lot. Who Rita and Yvette are they're the twins from okay. Edmonton. Edmonton right? um, they're wonderful gals. Jillian and Emmett, we, we really connected with them as well and we got to spend time with them in Hamilton. We did a lot of the Hamilton yeah. leg together and we really enjoyed them. They were really encouraging to us. On the show you can hear Emmett cheer, come on Lowell, come on buddy. <laughs> so like you could tell we had a really good relationship yeah. with them. Yeah. Steph and Chris, Chris were great. They're super strong women and they treated me really well with my vision too so it was great you guys went in saying we will help when we have to just a when bit of a can. strategy yeah even yeah. though even even when we're at the back when you're at the back of the pack and people helping people that's a it's kind of a risk because you could end up lost that day but um, we chose to do that in Haida Gwaii uh, Rita and Jillian and I were the last ones at the totem poles and I got my clue and Rita and Jillian were still struggling, so I stayed and helped them, but that, it had a direct payback. They helped us then with the puzzle right after that, so that kind of affirmed that choice right away to help when we can, and I mean, I didn't, we didn't think we'd need help with puzzles together, but we were thinking more of roadblocks that yeah. we all had to do if, if sure. there was a visual task, but you never, you never ended up needing help in a roadblock. Yeah. And we were doing that right off the beginning. Stefan and Antoine were really good friends of ours too, and yeah. right at the beginning up at Yellowknife, we helped them to get their clue after we got help from Julian and Emmett, and so we had a really good relationship with them. And then we helped Anne and Tanya in Vietnam too, and they helped us as we were going through the heat and trying to get back to our pit stop. So all the way along the line, we were trying to offer help and receive help and do the social game, and it really paid off. Yeah. I think there, it never did that backfire for us. So in retrospect, like thinking back, the best part about the trip was? You need to go first? Oh, sure. Um, so the best part of the trip was doing things you wouldn't get to do other places. So for me, the one moment, if you say, what was the best moment? It was in the tugboat, in Haida Gwaii, ramming those logs. It was just, <laughs> I'm, I'm a farm boy and I love equipment and, I've, and boats. And it was just, it was like adult tugboats, no adult um, bumper, bumper boats, boats. <laughs> just super fun. Yeah. And so that was a moment I had a big grin on my face the whole yeah. time. So the rappelling and the bungee jump, those were also the big moments for me. 
As far as challenges go, I really enjoyed the karaoke in Vietnam. <laughs> I just, that was really fun, and even eating yeah. the bugs. And that day we were we were on our own a lot that day, which we didn't mind at all. We just kind of did our own thing yeah, and had a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, we had a lot of fun together. Um, but the relationships and everything, well, relationship with each other, like this is it's a very unique opportunity that we sure. had to do this race, and so it, I mean we've already been pretty bonded, but bonded us even more. Memories so. will cherish forever. Yeah, like what do you take from this? Is it the memories or is it, is it that you can do this or what is it that you take away from the whole experience? I think all of the above. Yeah. Okay. I think to share it with our friends and family and our boys too when it came back was really fun. It's, that, yeah. it's, the, it's the vacation people actually want to watch yeah. um, <laughs> afterwards. So people were yeah. following the story. And just to solidify that we do have a good relationship and, yeah. and we have a good marriage and we work hard yeah. on that and, and we want to spread that too, that a good marriage is really important. And, and so to spread that message and the teamwork and communication that we have. It's yeah. also made me anyways even more grateful for what we have because I hadn't I don't think I'd realized how unique that was because the response we've received from Canada has been overwhelming and yeah. totally humbling. And I have I did not expect that degree of gratefulness and people and people feeling inspired and everything by and, and I just felt like that was our regular lives that we were living there. So That's just great. So to, to hear that from people was totally affirming and, and wow. We're getting some fun. I can't, I can't believe that people get that from us. So that's I was so excited that you responded to some of my tweets that I sent to you guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the, the social media has been really fun to yeah. interact with you and to interact with other fans sure. from people in the Everyone. media all the yeah. way to to little kids that have been emailed Twitter oh, and, and, and Instagram. Like you get on and just I think most to I think I you... think most of our Instagram followers are, are children. That's cool. Which or is youth, really yeah yeah, yeah. yeah youth. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is yeah which is really really sweet and I'm glad that we can be role models for them hopefully. We've had some fun comments though some people are saying seeing you guys interact together is maybe you want to treat my spouse more kindly or or these parents that have sent <laughs> sent comments from their kids when we got eliminated like I heard I heard my daughter crying herself to sleep um, or others just like talking about the inspiration at a four-year-old child who's visually impaired too and say I see like he sees oh, and then like, oh, that oh, sounds like that. me mama and then oh, and then wow. the mom said and look what that, he can do and we're gets, like, oh as soon as we yeah. read that we, we instantly literally yeah. started crying so we've actually had lots of moments of tearing up ourselves from the comments we've been receiving yeah. from oh, especially people. after we were eliminated and like we couldn't even wow. Keep up with the. Again, I still don't think we've read everything, but just sobbing our way through. How much, things how much really, crying did you do on the race? Well, on the race, while we were actually on the race, um, well, I cried every day. Special, not, did you but really? only because did I missed the kids. Yeah. Like, not during the not leg. during the legs. I never cried during the legs. It was only. Yeah, well, they showed only, you. They showed you your kids. In the oh, leg. That uh, was, yeah. That's yeah. the only time during yeah. a leg that I cried yeah. was yeah, very emotional hearing from the kids. It was wonderful, but at the same time, totally heart wrenching because. Yeah. Uh, but at that point, it had been weeks since we had heard their voices or, or seen them. So, yeah, that was that was hard. But. Pit stops, we had a good cry, I think, every pit stop. Just, yeah. just, just the overwhelm. And on the airplanes, and I was just, just for a second, <laughs> just give me a minute, okay, I, I'm good now. <laughs> as long as it's not ugly crying, that's good. Oh, it's ugly crying. <laughs> as long as it's not on camera ugly yeah, crying. Yeah. That's why I do it on airplanes or in hotel yeah. rooms. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, so, it was tough for Julie. So if you have any advice for anyone who says, I want to take that race, what's the best thing you should, a person should know? Taking the race. I want to, I want to, I want to. To apply? Yeah. What do you think? What's, what are some of the big tricks? Well, the, the tricks. Other than saying that you're blind. Well, the tricks, the tricks <laughs> you for applying, you've got to have a story, right? Yeah. I think to get. <laughs> We're the, the whole hum white couple. That's what one of the spoiler sites first thought. <laughs> At first glance, they just look like your average ho hum oh, white, white couple. couple. <laughs> and we're like, hey! So, <laughs> That's it. But then you see the white cane. Like, see, oh, okay. then, then there's a story involved. And so they actually want to see something that would be compelling. So, And they also want to see the interaction. So if you do a video, you do the video and have your story and talk and who you are and show them some interaction and sure. show the story. And then once, if you get on, awesome, yeah. we'll on some great stories, then it's fully enjoy the moment yeah. and take one clue at a time. The overall experience, if you think about everything you do from the beginning, ripping the clue and going all the way to the end, it's completely so, overwhelming what yeah. you do in those, those 11, 10 to 11 legs. Take one clue at a time, yeah. rip it, read it, think it, do it, yeah. and, and enjoy the process. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Cheers. Thank hey, you, yo. Julie. <laughs> Julie. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you very you. much.